5158027. Three-way calls or call waiting is not allowed and may automatically disconnect this call. Did you know the person calling you now has voicemail? You can leave a message for this party by calling 520-448-3426. You will need to know the inmate's nine-digit phone ID. Thank you for using GTL. What's good with YouTube, y'all? We know Dick Rocker with a Thomas perspective. You already know Thomas coming directly from the county jail. Mashing, dashing, sliding on through with a whole lot of energy. So please hit the like, subscribe, comment. Do all those things to help support this channel. And hit that bell notification for future our content. So I think this is going to be an interesting topic that we haven't really talked about in the past, man. It's about Daniels. Well, Daniels in prison who use drugs and, and how it's not accepted, how it for years, man, uh, basically this is the one thing that got so many people crossed up in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s is the misuse of, of using drugs because every decision that comes with drugs comes with consequences, right? And people are ready to, to make proper decisions and this is what might happen from the get-go and, and to understand you got to go back to around 74 and 75 and, and I actually had the first written policy that we had put out there and it was really simple. Uh, the, the no fiction of drugs was implemented basically around 74, 75, I believe, right? And, and basically what that was is if you were known to, to sign heroin, if you were known to fix drugs, you ended up with stuff for the green light. You weren't able to do so. And with that, what you ended up getting was a lot of people that were closet users, okay? Now, the reasons why this policy came, that came out was after 1972, the restructure of, of the mob organization came about, you had a lot of people that were growing. And the first regiment started to occur sometime in the mid 70s, right? But there was no regiment. And people were going to the streets and they were doing what they were supposed to do. They were, I mean, they weren't doing what they were supposed to do. They weren't looking back. You know, and, and every organization has to be self supporting. The rackets don't just don't include the streets or prison. They have to be both. And what they were seeing was people would come in prison, they, they would get cooked up for, for security or protection. And they would get to the streets and they would forget. They would go back to Sunny Dope, they would and Dope, and they wouldn't kick in. Now, as they were doing experiment regiments in San Jose and Stockton and, and whatnot, Fresno was basically the first regiment, but there was experiment regiments at that time. And that's when basically Death Row Joe, who wasn't a drug user, okay, Death Row Joe was an alcoholic, but he was not a drug user. Baba was a, a, a cause of fucking junkie, though. They came from the policy to where he was fixing the dope. A green light would be put on you. Now, what ended up coming from that is, like I said, you have closet users. You would have Bible who was ordering green lights for people that were signing dope, but yet he would be the first to sign dope. You know, there's rumors about how he had a brother hit out over, over signing dope, and he used that to have the brother hit so he could then date the chick because he was dating the chick on the side. So, like I said, the drugs have always been an issue within the organization. And, and Man, I can go through almost the majority of those that were holding rank and file at that time in the 70s. A lot of them were using dope, and a lot of people knew it. But it was basically came down to favoritism, okay? If you were angry with this captain or this lieutenant, then you weren't going to get hit for using dope. But if you weren't, you were going to get a hit. And what ended up happening, you had in the 70s, right, when fucking everybody got indicted, you had all these people that were scared they were going to get killed. They all started dropping, dropping out, basically. Started telling because they were fucking drug dope beans. And I've always said this. It's hard to tell a drug addict that they can't use. If they've been using their whole life, you can't just have someone commit to, to a group and expect them just to fucking take all the advice that they have it. That's going to take a lot of discipline. It's going to take a lot of programming. And it's just, it's impossible to expect that. But they start to expect that. And that was one of the biggest um, issues of the 70s that kind of started to destroy the mob. Is one, they started to recruit everybody, but then as they had to recruit everybody, they started having to kill everybody, okay? Now, at the age of 10, we had the NR and Nathaniel. Basically, in the 80s and 90s, NR members pretty much had to follow the same policy. As we know, bond number eight, you got to take physical regard for your mental and physical health, basically, your mental well-being. You can't use cycles, you can't use dope. So, like I said before, once you're drug addict, always a drug addict. It's hard to sit there a person who comes into a power position. And being in prison, there's a lot of fucking drugs. A lot of fucking drugs. So you had a lot of individuals that were using dope. And 
With that came a lot of individuals who either fell a favor or got deemed no good because let's look at it, it's, it's beyond. Okay? When you're using dope, you're not, your actions are not going to always be what they're supposed to be. You're not going to always make the right choices. You may endanger other people's lives, right? You may endanger your whole cause. You may start to show individualism. You may start to show favoritism, all because of the dope. And that's why it's always been to do for any of things to use. Now, in the 80s and 90s, if you were just a regular or a lawyer, you could use dope. It really wasn't a red flag. Because it only applied to those that were basically checked out, those that played the prison policy. Okay? But that started to change. Like I said, around, let me see, shit. I remember the 90s. When I was in, in the Santa Clara County Jail, the youngster, so we'd be getting these fucking, get, get some meth come in, we get high as fuck, some heroin come in, we get high as fuck. I remember being in 6 B with Chico, okay? And basically an issue would come through, the household would get the issue. And he would give every household member, every lawyer, or Daniel, an issue. And you were told you could do what you want with that. You could use it, you could sell it, you could give it away. It doesn't matter. And it was okay to use. It wasn't really like a red flag, unless you were clicked up. Then it became an issue, man. And I, I remember fucking, uh, I had an incident back then where my son at the time was, was uh, he was doctor, but he really wasn't, he was running with the homeboys that he was programmed, but he really never programmed with the homies before. And he used to gamble a lot, and he had gotten dead with these, these individuals. And my next door neighbor was some woods, they asked him what, you know, try, he tried to come in and question me about it, right? And, I felt like the dude was jamming me up, so next thing you know, I go and tell Chuko, Chuko, little Spaghetti, little Mata, about five or six dudes fucking, literally fucking came up on the fucking woods all fucking crazy, right? And it was, and the woods were basically like, oh, well, no, we didn't mean it like that. It was a whole big old issue because I had misinterpreted and I thought the dude was trying to come at me sideways based upon my celly. But what it really was is I got paranoid because I was on the fucking dope and I just didn't know what the dude was telling my celly to get me about my celly. So after that, I was told not to fucking use any more dope, okay? Uh, but that, like I said, that was a long time ago, but that's just how it was, okay? And like I said, when I got to Sloan, everybody was fucking using You know what I'm saying? I had done black hair, I had, uh, I had done meth, and I really didn't use that much, to be honest with you. And all the time I was there, maybe I used to eat a chin ties, but it was always one of those things, don't ask, don't tell. You know, anybody that I got high with, they was, a lot of times they were established, the whole thing was, this stays in the room, this stays in the cell. Yeah, I never did it to you, you know, but that's just how it was. Because at that time, if you were an NR member, and later on that would change to you know, fails, if you were used, you'd get hit. After the assault case of the came out, we were no longer allowed to use. And it became basically a red light. If you're using it on any prison yard, you were fixing drugs, you were doing any of that, you were going to get to you no good. And I've always said that that's one of the biggest, uh, the change in the, the assault case filter. When they made all those changes and made, made Northerners obligated to fall under rest of the laws, that really changed everything. And you started to see all the vehicles, all the old timers, all the dudes that had been doing time since the 70s and 60s that had big old bull shots, but never got clipped up, never were involved in politics. But when it was get out, we're always ready to get off. You started seeing them drop like flies. You started seeing them fucking drop out, go to the SMI side because a lot of them wanted to get high. Now they're being told that they can't get high. Now they're being told that they have to do education, and now they're being told that they have to write all these reports. These dudes have been doing time for 20 fucking years. They know how to do time, but it pushed away a lot of old-timers that just wanted to do the time the way they wanted to do. And I've always said that when you start to enforce the NR law on just a regular end, it really created a whole pushback for people to go to the S&Y. Because a lot of dudes just wanted to do the time they wanted to get high. And up until the Salt-Tacon filter, after Long Daniel, you could get high back in. Now, like I said, I've seen every, ever since then, that was the whole issue of a lot of people that were being given no good in the 90s. The issue of authority, but a lot of times that issue of authority was those people that were getting hot. Whenever you got to a yard and you wanted to take over because everything wasn't going up the bar, you were always going to look for any type of issue. There were so many leadership changes that happened in the 80s and 90s, right, amongst the NR, when someone would get to a yard, and it was all over drug use, right? Now... Have I used drugs? I've used drugs with every flesh, okay? I remember being in corporate, okay? This is like, let me see, shit, 2004, okay? We were hitting on the cars at the time. And I remember someone gets at me, right? Okay? There was a regiment commander of corporate at that time, 
the UC at the time was AC. Okay, AC had just rocked it up. I went to UNC. I went to Maestro. All, all the northerners, all the north I was going to teach you there. Okay, and so we had. It was basically an Imago clan was there at the time, and uh, AC was headquarters at that time for all folks. You know what I'm saying? Which is one of the few strongholds that. Every, everybody, any, any prison or any street regiment is pretty much not acknowledge anything that comes from there. So when we're hitting, I remember fucking said, we get that. You know what I'm saying? And he goes, can you handle some tweets? And I'm like, I'm thinking it's a fucking a true question. And I'm like, what are you getting that? You know what I'm saying? Like, can I handle some tweets? Are you trying to fucking test me right now? Man, I wrote him back a kite. He goes, oh, no, I'm being fucking serious. No, we need to test some shit. Either can you or can you not? And I'm like, no, I'm not. Fuck me, man. I'll catch the shit. The first, first thing he sends me, it's fucking, I take the card and shit, and I'm like, I write silver back on my ball. I don't know if this is fucking good or not, bro. And fucking silver back, he goes, I gave you the wrong fucking piece. He goes, that, you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So next thing I'm going to give me a fucking good ass fucking piece, I take it, man. Oh, man. I, I, I wrote fucking silver, a fucking 10,000 word fucking rewrite shit, man. Oh, man. I was like, dude, this is fucking off the fucking hook. You know what I mean? And it was just fucking like, it was weird because I had I even had a family at the time. You know what I'm saying? And here I am high as fuck and shit in the fucking cell. I'm not supposed to be fucking high. We're not supposed to get high. It's basically to get high as fucking, it's a fucking green light to fucking kill me. And here I am talking to my fucking family high as fucking, high as fucking, high as shit. I, I, I think I eventually let him know and shit. He started fucking laughing, right? But that's just how it was. Even on the street. You know what I'm saying? Fucking. Richo, Richo was one. Richo was out there signing fucking mess. You know what I'm saying? Come on my house and shit, recite the whole constitution and shit, and fucking doing all kinds of outlandish shit. It's always been an issue that we, that as, as people that, that are part of the movement or people that are part of the organization, drugs are real. And I've always said this before, like when it comes to psychmeds or it comes to fucking drug issues, you can't control certain parts of that because none of us are fucking doctors. None of us are counselors. We're not therapists. And we don't know how deep the hooks of addiction have, have gotten into people. Me, you know, years later, who've done, I've done recovery, I've done the steps. I think that's been the biggest mistake that we've ever made is that we put certain policies on our own people, right? We become hypocrites and we put expectations that, that you can't reach. It's just like I've always said, you know, one of the biggest mistakes that we've made with, with the Africanos is we've always tried to put our expectations of our people on them, knowing damn well that they're not going to be as strict or as disciplined as far as, you know, dealing with the issues of how we deal with it. And they don't have to be. That's their people. That's their car. But it's the same thing when it comes to addiction, man. And, and, you know, I think every homeboy has probably experienced when they got to a yard and, and, and you got people who are fucking using dope on the, you know, kind of be secret about it. You know, and that should happen. And the reasons why, you know, drug addiction has been such an issue in the past is because of the of it. When you start to have it, like, crowded users on the yard, you're, you're running the yard and you're being secret about it, you're going to have people that are going to be doing fucking backdoor sand and shit just to cover their fucking ass. No one wants to be revealed that they're using it because they know the consequences of it. They feel nice in their fucking neck. Therefore, they're going to cover their ass. And that's where you had people that were making bad calls just to, you know, see why it covers your ass. They don't want to be found out. And I've, I've always been supportive and, and thought that out of all the groups, whether it's the Sudanios, the whites, the blacks, I've always respected that the North Downs, that we've always had the strictest policy as far as not allowing drugs to not our and bio. But the fucked thing about it is that it happens in secret, right? It happens when it's not supposed to. And a lot of people are giving passes on it, man. You'd be surprised at some of the granadas that have been around who've been high. You'd be surprised at some of the bulls that came to the yard, and I'm like, bro, you're fucking high. I never green eyes. This is yard six in San Quentin. You know what I mean? And, and he was the RA at the time. No, he wasn't the RA. When he got there, he got stripped of his position, and I, I took his position. But when we went to yard, I remember green eyes would be out there fucking high on fucking pills. Yeah, that's a no no. That's a red fucking flag. But because, you know what I'm saying, Bubba was there, you know, there's going to be that home for a favoritism, man. Huh? And that's what comes with the dope, the dope game, man. Huh? There's a reason why no things aren't supposed to use, but like the same token, man, I think that, you know, being honest about it is more important than being fake about it. And the all the stuff that people have always tried to hide it because once revealed, we know the consequences. Look at the Colonel Smiley. 
from Sackcraft. I know a smiley fucking thing. When I first was going to Corporal Street back in the 90s, saw that, saw that for now. As soon as they got back to the mainland, the dope's all there. Started using, became a different individual. And I don't know the cause and effects for what happened, why he got killed, but from what I was told, it had to do with fucking drug use, getting his death with surveillance, which is a no-no. Okay? That's what happens, though, like I said, when you start to use dope, you don't become the same person. Weechel. Look at Weechel. His sentence, why he got into it. He got so high on fucking dope, he started cussing out corny and skipping all them fucking, telling the young guy not, like, going on the phone, fucking, tell my age to go fuck himself. These are things that happen. Why? Because he was fucking high. Because if he would have been sober, he would have never fucking talk to my age like that. He would have never try to fucking tell the young guy not to say this and say that. That just wouldn't happen. And that's why, for, for all this time, it's going back to the 70s. That's why it's always been taboo and it's always been forsaken for no thing to use. And all you're going to do is look at the bylaws and state that. This is my experience. Like I said, I was no saint. There were times I used. There were times I used. It could have been killed. You know, it is what it is. That's the life it is. With that said, what's up from ACP? I'm out.